Okay, I just finished seven rows, and you might be asking yourself when you are close to this, did I knit seven rows, or how can I figure out whether I finished the seven rows? How do I count gar garter stitch rows? Uh, and I'll show you that, but you also have to consider what side of the fabric is the right side of the fabric, and which side of the fabric is the wrong side of the fabric. So let's start with the right side of the fabric. For this project, uh, if you cast on the long tail cast on method, you, the right side of your project is going to be the side that has the fabric facing you with the long tail cast on tail end of the yarn, this right here at the bottom edge, on the right side. So that means that's the right facing fabric. If you did not cast on the stitches with the long tail cast on method, you can still figure out which side is the right sa side facing fabric by counting the stitches. So let's start with counting the stitches. Counting rows in the garter stitch is tricky if you aren't sure what you're looking for as a beginner knitter, but once you know what you're looking for, it gets easier. And it's going to be a little tricky with this fuzzy yarn on this baby blanket project. So let's first identify what we're looking for when we count the rows with a swatch that's knit in the garter stitch and a smoother fabric. So what we're looking for are the bumps in the row. So as you can see here, there's bumps in, there's rows, and they have bumps in each row. So, say for instance, this line here has bottom bumps that curve up, and then on top they have the top bumps that curve down. So, with each row that you're counting, a row that has the upward curves is considered one row, and then the next row is the row that has the downward curves, so that's the second row and then you look for the, the next bump line above that, which is the upward curves. That's another row. And then above that is the downward curves. And that's a subsequent row. And uh, if you're knitting a garter stitch, it's gonna be upward curve row, downward curve row, upward curve row, downward curve row. And those are what you're counting when you're counting rows. So let's look at our baby blanket. We have here the seven rows, we think, and I have it as front facing fabric with the tail end of the cast on yarn on the right side. And I've chosen that to be my front facing fabric. Although it's easy to choose either side as your front facing fabric. If you make um, an error even in counting the rows, you still can make this work out. So just try your best to count the rows. So here we have Ro lines of bumps going up. When you're counting the rows, don't count the cast on row, which is the bottom selvage. You're looking for the next bump sequence above that, and you're looking for an upward curve bumps. So you have the, the cast on selvage row, but we're not counting that in our knit rows. And then we're gonna go up one, till we find the upward facing curves, which is right here. And that's our first row. And then on top of that would be the downward facing curves. And that's row number two. And since this was a downward facing, the next row we're looking for is upward, which is right above it. That's row number three. And on top of that is downward facing curves. That would be row number four. And then above that, we're looking for upward facing curves. That's row number five. And then above that is the downward facing curves. That's row number six. And then there's no more bump curves above that. All that's left are the stitches on the needle. But those stitches on the needle are actually a row that you've knit. So that would be row number seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
So I have knit seven rows. Now I'm ready to place the markers onto the needle to separate where I'm going to make stitch changes in the following rows. Now that we have counted the seven rows, we're ready to knit the eighth row and we'll be using our stitch markers on this row to place them on the needle to mark the stitches where stitch changes will happen in future rows. So we're going to start by knitting six stitches. Two, four, six, and then we're going to place our first marker on the needle. And then we're going to take the yarn and we're going to bring it to the front and we're going to purl 124 stitches. That's purling until there's six stitches left on the left side of the needle. Okay, getting close to the end of the row. Two, four, six, couple more. Okay, so now we have six stitches left on the left needle, and before we knit those, we are going to place the stitch marker on the right needle and then we're going to take the yarn and put it towards the back because we're going to knit those last six stitches. Okay, we're finished with that row. Let's do the second row of this pattern sequence. We're going to turn the, the piece over so the cast on row with the long tail yarn that's on the bottom is facing on the right side and that's showing that this is the right side of the fabric. And so for all right side fabrics, you're going to knit the entire row. So you're going to knit the first six stitches. Slip the marker onto your right needle and continue knitting until you get to the next marker. And then you're going to slip that marker and finish the row knitting. Thank you. 
Okay, we're approaching the second marker. We're finishing the knit in the body. We're going to slip the marker to the right needle and we're going to finish knitting by knitting the last six stitches. And then we're going to continue going to the wrong side of the fabric where we'll be always knitting the first six and last six stitches of every row and then the only change will be on the wrong side of the row you're going to purl the body's main stitches and on the right side of the row you're going to knit the body's main stitches. So just follow that sequence. Wrong side you're going to knit six, purl 124 and knit the last six. On the right side you're going to knit all the stitches. And you're going to do this until the piece measures 35 inches so for the pattern sequence for the body you're knitting on each side the first and last six stitches and then on the front side of the fabric you're knitting all the center body stitches and on the back side of the fabric this is what it looks like because you're purling. So here it'd be knit and purl. Here it's knit and knit. Isn't that pretty? Can't wait to see what you do. I'm going to keep knitting this project until I finish the first ball of yarn and that's when I'll check in with you again and show you where to end your row when finishing that first ball of yarn and then how to transfer the second ball of yarn onto your project with the uh, long tails of the yarn still remaining. But that won't be a big deal. I'll teach you how to weave in those ends so you can't tell where one ball of yarn ends and one ball of yarn begins. And so, happy knitting until then, and I'll check back with you soon. the first ball of yarn for the baby blanket and now it's time to attach the second ball so I'm going to show you how to do that. So here we've knit the first ball of the latte cakes yarn and it's time to attach the second ball of yarn and the first thing you need to know is where to end the first ball of yarn yarn tail and where to begin the second yarn tail. Yarn tail meaning the end of the yarn. So when you're knitting your project, don't end the yarn in the middle of the row. End it on either end of the row. So this one I finished at the end of the row and here's the remainder of the yarn tail. And so the reason you want it at the sides of the row and not in the middle is because when you are weaving in the yarn tails at the end it'll make it a much cleaner process and you won't be able to tell where the old yarn ends and the new yarn begins. So since we ended this yarn at the end of the row I'm going to give it about 10 inches of yarn and break it off here. So when attaching the second yarn to your project, you're going to start the first stitch by knitting the right needle into the left needle, creating the X. And then you're going to take your new yarn and you're going to wrap it around the right needle and hold the two strands of yarn together as you create that loop and create that first stitch. Now it's going to be loose on the end here, but don't worry about that yet. Just start your second stitch and on the second stitch don't take the end tail, take the working yarn and create that knit stitch. And now you can continue knitting with the working yarn as you start your new row.
Okay, so now that we have attached the second ball of yarn of the latte cakes to the baby blanket, I will meet you back here when your piece measures 35 inches from the beginning. So measure from the very first row that you cast on, and when it gets to 35 inches, it'll be time to go back to the garter stitch to create the border, the final border, because you're almost done with your project. So see you next time.